You guys ready? Here we go. You got one more opportunity to guess which number. Actually, wait. H hang on, hang on. Let me, let me, let me adjust the arrow right quick. Because I noticed, now, this is not a loaded device. Let, let, me, let me explain this. This is not a loaded device, but the permanent magnets inside of the motor that spin the little thing, there's six magnets inside the motor, so when this comes to a halt, it kind of wants to favor a spot between those six magnets. So uh, just by taking the arrow off and putting it back down, I change where on the dial those six points are. So... Here we go. <laughs> you guys want Whisper to sit on the arrow again? <laughs> you guys. The lengths all go for a joke. There we go. They, oh, that's a horrible sound, actually. Okay, let's slow her down. She's landed. She's put it on number seven, actually. So that's technically, technically by putting Whisper on the arrow, she kind of invalidates the six points on the, the thing, on, on the dial that it tends to favor because of the magnets. But <laughs> it's it's seven. Oh man, we got. <laughs> oh dude, <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> you guys, you guys ready for this? It's trading cards from the Super Mario Brothers movie. It's gonna be a good week. Before I open this, before I open this. I, uh, I, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the, uh, the band Roxette. I love them. And they had a, uh, a, a single called Almost Unreal, which was like the, the, not, not, not the title track, but like the headline track of this movie. I invite you after this stream or after you watch this video, if you're going to watch on YouTube, look up that music video because the music video is about a guy who tries to watch the Super Mario Brothers movie, but it's so bad that he turns into a lizard at the end. I'm not, I'm not making that up. Look it up. We've got eight trading cards from the Super, Super Mario Brothers movie starring Bob Hoskins, God rest his soul, and John Leguizamo, God also rest his soul, even though he's still alive, he's dead, been dead on the inside. I guess this was uh, Skybox's slogan, because great cards are hard to find. Something tells me that we should just be looking elsewhere, but now I'm not sure if, if we should read the back first and then flip it over or if we should start from the front because this back card says the fungus is avenged. And uh, here's a little little personal anecdote. Uh, I am uh, deathly afraid of mushrooms and fungi, so uh, the I don't want to see what's on the other side of this card. The, the Spike and Iggy wrap? I should have probably, like, watched this movie recently. I haven't seen it in a long-ass time. Um, I don't... I don't really know what these two people are doing. That I don't recognize them, so that's, uh... Oh, that's just the movie logo down at the bottom. Maybe it'll tell us. Maybe it'll tell us here. The Spike and Iggy rap. We're gonna get a focus... I, that's camera. It's, 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 a, it's an uphill battle. <laughs> this is... <laughs> This is in no way a Mario-related image, yeah. Spike and Iggy, inspired by their new do-good plumber pals Mario and Luigi, not to mention way too much to drink, perform a protest rap front and center at the Boom Boom Bar. Koopa the Party Poopa, they sing with gusto. If this was a, if this was a protest event today, they would have just burned the bar down and smashed all the windows and spray-painted on all the walls and then kicked over the trash cans outside. The oh fuck, this is gross. The secret revealed. I feel like it's. I feel like my camera just doesn't want to focus on this. Like period, and I don't. I so don't blame <laughs> you guys in chat. Are like Yoshi looks kind of nice. Yeah, Yoshi was literally a fucking dinosaur. <laughs> it was like it was like they borrowed the animatronics from Jurassic Park, and they were like, "Here, fuck it, we'll name it Yoshi." Spike and Iggy lead Daisy into the fungus room of Koopa Tower, where she is about to learn the, um, the amazing truth. The dripping cone of fungus in inside is the old king who formerly ruled this dimension. That fungus cone also happens to be Daisy's father. Now, you, you see, uh... In the game, the king was turned into, like, a dog. Or like a bird, you know? I think one of them was also like one of those cactus enemies. 
Why couldn't the king be turned into like a uh, like a tiger or something like 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 a scary animal like a bobcat where it's like wow oh no the king has been transformed and he's a he's a uh, he's a temperamental evil animal we've got to go save him no they turn it into they they turn it into this 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 is some fucking Hellraiser shit I really like the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you guys in chat, I love chat tonight. You guys are, you guys are, you guys are amazing tonight. <laughs> this would have never happened if Iwata was still alive. Iwata was alive when this came out. This is 1993. Anyways, oh god damn, they're really hammering this one home. Here's here's Bob Hoskins uh, handling a uh, armful of stringy J lube called the fungus, the fungus among us. I almost just don't want to read this. Oh shit, hang on. We got a, a holographic card next. Me... This next card is a holographic uh, Dennis Hopper holding a gun. Dr he, he played Koopa, Dennis Hopper. Koopa, Koopa, oh my god, you're seeing a reflection of the camera. Koopa regresses. That was the thing, it's like people like de-evolved in the movie or something, and that was like a plot point, and you can kind of see... There's like a really kind of spooky ghost of a face behind Dennis Hopper's actual face and behind that dumbass hair that he's got that was supposed to be Koopa's spikes and it fucking looks dumb. I I can um no 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 rule 34 exists of this character. Period. I'm just going to say that right now. And I know I know some of you watching this are going to be like, oh, "I'm going to go make some ironically." You won't because you're not going to be able to bring yourself to finish it because it's so fucking unlikable and disgusting. You're going to stop and you're going to if you're making it on paper, you're going to burn it or if it's on Photoshop, you're just going to throw that shit right in the recycle bin and you're going to right click empty recycle bin twice just to make sure. Here's here's Dennis Hopper being all rapey and touchy feely on Daisy. Uh, which this honestly just looks like a still from that Three Ninjas at Mega Mountain movie. I can't even fucking tell them apart. This man regretted this role so fucking much. In fact, there was one interview he did that I don't I don't remember who it was with, but it was like, what's like the one role you regret doing? something something and like the one thing you wish you could do better and he basically answered super mario brothers for every fucking question because he hated this goddamn movie he actually i think this was substantiated both him and john leguizamo got completely shit-faced just to make it through the production of this movie because it was so bad i can just put uh just you know just lay these things out we got to put this shiny one in the center that's the money maker right there let's just lay these out Let's lay these out. Make them look nice. I want everyone to take a look at these cards. Even fucking Whisper doesn't like them. She's just looking the other way. Look at these cards. Yeah, the, you're right. We didn't get any fucking Yoshi cards. What a rip. This movie was so bad. This move. This was so bad. They thought this holographic Dennis Hopper turning into a dinosaur and then turning into slime... They thought this was such a grand idea, and the movie was so bad that they have never made another movie based upon a Mario, in, uh, not Mario, a Nintendo intellectual property in 24 years. They're afraid to do it. They're like, we can make a movie about Metroid. We can make a movie about uh, Legend of Zelda. No, no, they're not touching it because of what happened with this, because this... This got away from itself and turned into shit. Guess number, you guess which one you think it's going to land on again. If you guess it right, you don't win anything. Maybe you will in the future. Uh, but until then, you just get bragging rights. Slowing down. Slowing down. To, what is that? 15? Damn, 15? We're getting sequential numbers here. It's throwing me, it's throwing me off. The uh, probability of that happening is... Not much. I can't do the math in my head. I fucking blanked out. But it's 15! You just posted a link in chat to a DeviantArt thing that I can tell from the URL is titled Amy's Diaper Shortage. Like fucking hell, I'm gonna click that. As, as, as a wise man named George W. Bush once said, Fool me once, shame on 
you. Fool me twice? You fool me, you, 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 you fool me, you can't get fooled again. Uh, this one comes from Mr. Bad Dragon himself, Varka, and it is a pack of ASPCA <laughs> Pets and Creatures trading cards. If, uh, if you're watching this and you're not from the United States or you don't know who the ASPCA are, I, I forget... I forget what the acronym stands for, but it's um, it's a animal welfare, animal rights uh, group. It's a charity organization that they... It's basically like PETA, but not batshit crazy. Um, ASPCA is seen as the, the less crazy alternative to PETA. Um, if PETA is the far left, ASPCA is a moderate centrist. Uh, there we go. Um, and the Animal Liberation Front is the far right. There, I just completed the analogy. There we go. These are the people that had that commercial that was on um, that was on TV, and it played that. It showed all the pic, all the close-ups of the sad dogs, and it played that uh, in in the arms of the angel song. This is this is that uh, Sarah McLaughlin, the uh, singer who recorded in the arms of the angel. She herself said she was fucking tired of that commercial on Reddit a long time ago. So another another uh, another little tidbit for you. So we've got uh, we got spiders. We got we got this cat staring at a floating goldfish. We got multiple cats actually we got some dogs we got a horse these are all good things uh two special cards per pack oh they've got tactile ones diamond ones 3d god damn they're going all out this is almost like these are almost like the trading cards from way back in the day where they gave you really cool stuff that cat is fucking tripping out he's just staring at this floating goldfish and he's like dude are you are you, are you for real right now I really want to see which ones are <laughs> which ones are in there. I, I hope we get. I hope the cat staring at magical floating goldfish is a is a card is a, is a potential card. Oh Jesus! The the foil has separated from the plastic and now it's not opening. I like it already. It's Mordecai, IRL. It's a blue jay. Pretty pretty little pretty little burb. Pretty little blue burb. Uh, what is on the back? So I, I figured this is almost like those little uh, those little fact cards you that you used to get in the mail uh, when you were like in second grade, like way back in the day, where it was like animal fact cards. Where's its habitat? Where's the autofocus? <laughs> Up next is um, ton 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 tonkinies. I'm just gonna go with cat, and this is a cat. This is a cat who's too tired to to put up with your shit. This <laughs> this is a this is a default cat. <laughs> Necros Necro says this is the rookie Mordecai card. I like that. It's a good one. Oh man, bearded collie. This is this is this is the Tim Allen dog from the Shaggy Dog. I think there's too much detail. My my camera doesn't like it. There we go. Oh man, that is uh that is that that dog looks like what you pull out of a vacuum roller when you have long hair like I do and your hair just perpetually falls out and jams up the goddamn vacuum and then you just rip it all out at once and it's like this massive nasty looking hairball. That's that dog. If they're I, I know of um regular collies, lassie collie, I don't know what kind of collie that is. I didn't even know there was a distinction. I just thought uh, Lassie was just a collie. So apparently you can add adjectives to this and, and make really ugly, nasty looking dogs. So there you go, Santa Claus dog. Oh, dude. Hell yeah. We got a gold a gold diamond foil. I don't know what the hell this holographic is. It's a, it's a Russian blue kitty cat. Where will you be when the acid kicks in? This cat is uh, phasing, phasing across dimensions as we know it. Oh, what a surprise. The Russian blue cat is from Russia. Oh, we got... Oh, shit, they do have snakes. Look at that. All creatures, great and small. It's a corn snake. Everyone likes corn snakes. From America. Let's see. Corn snakes lack venom, but subdues its small prey by constriction. Not all snakes. Not all snakes have venom. Come on. Everyone knows this. Corn snakes help control populations of mice and rats that damage crops and spread disease on farms. So this is, I mean, corn snake is your friend. This is, this is, please, please no steppy on snack. Uh, that's not a frisbee. <laughs> Goose. <laughs> it, 
it just so happens that uh, on the off chance that my buddy Goose shows up to the stream, we have something that gets unboxed that has a goose in it. This is the American Goose. Shout outs to Goose. <laughs> <laughs> let's learn let's learn oh wait no, um no the african goose okay i said american goose because i read it wrong because it's white text on yellow turns out it's called the african goose and it's from china so who fucked that up this is somehow payoff for me saying oh the russian blue cats from russia color me surprised here you go this is the this is the punchline that i i didn't e i did not even know was coming oh we got a norwegian forest cat Look at this, look at this cute, look at that cute kitty. That cute little cat, I wanna, boop, right on the nose. And it's a Cocker Spaniel. This is probably the most stuck up looking dog I've ever seen in my entire goddamn life. If Milo Yabadubalopoulos got a perm and was a dog, he would look like this. So let's, let's take a look at all the, let's take a look at all the cards. We got shiny, we got, we got three cats. That's a pretty good haul, I'm not gonna lie. Three cats. They really know their demog oh the fish is upside down. They they uh, really know their market if they if they give you nine cards and a full third of them are cats. Eat your heart out, zoo book stickers. Look at this fucking shit. This is cool. Uh, I'm kind of upset that I didn't get on the back because there's a couple cards that say it feels like fur or feathers. So I would imagine they would have included texture cards. And I'm kind of interested to see what those would have been, but whatever. I, these are pretty cool. I mean, there's, let's say, t yeah, there's 200 cards in the pack. So that's, you're going to buy a lot of them to try to collect them all. Um, yeah, these, these, these are all right. We have, we have opened up far worse trading cards on this show. This, these are not the best, but we have certainly opened far, far worse. Uh, thank you, Varka, for sending this one in. I appreciate it. And if you, uh, if you want to uh, buy obscenely large furry-themed sex toys, why not order from BadDragon.com? Check it out. Go in your web browser, type in www.BadDragon.com. Make sure you put a hyphen between those two words. Um, and there you go. You can empty your wallet and, and fill your ass. They really should hire me to write jingles for their products, man. I'd be, I'd be fucking great at it. Once you go black, you never go back. Once you go chance, you die. We're gonna spin, we're gonna spin that wheel. Guess a number, pick a number, guess a number, random number, I don't know, that's probably a good enough spin because the longer you hold it down, the longer it takes to stop and uh, theoretically I could fill the clock by talking about inane shit like I am right now. Uh, but I don't know if I, oh look at that, it's number eight. <laughs> oh man, uh, Remember, remember when we got the uh, Austin Austin Toy Museum Rad Pack cards that had like fifteen duplicates of the Lion King, and my my brother Reflex really really wanted to land on number eight. I just realized we just got the we just got the cards he wanted. We've got two packs because there's not very many cards in each pack, but it's Bigfoot, the Legend of Bigfoot, the original monster truck. These cards, I shit you not, is there a date on the... They're, they're fucking jacked up. Is there a date? Because these are from like... I think these are from like 1984, 1985. So these these trading cards are older than I am. Bigfoot 4x4x4. Four by four by four. I don't know what the third four is for. I, I guess it's because Bigfoot can crush cars in, the, in, in more dimensions than regular trucks can. So... There you fucking go. Also, there's a poster offer on the back, and I, I really wish, like, if I could go back... I wish I could go back in time and just get this poster, because it sounds fucking radical. I don't even know what the poster is, but I want it. I want it. I don't think you guys realize this, but there was, like, a huge, like, cult of personality around Bigfoot back in the day. He had, like, theme songs written about it. It was a big deal. So these cards were released, like, at the height of Bigfoot mania. And right off the bat, right off the bat, Look at this fucking thing. Now, see, this is why I wish my brother Reflex were here. Because he would be able to, uh... If this will focus. He would he would be able to, um... God damn, there we go. He'd be able to tell me which Bigfoot model this is. I want to say this is Bigfoot number 5. This is the one with, like, the wheels that are literally 10 feet tall. 
And this Bigfoot is so big, you may have just now realized it's running over two other goddamn monster trucks. That's how big fucking Bigfoot is. Do you... You can't believe this shit. I'm dead fucking serious when I say Bigfoot was fucking crazy back in the day. You only get five cards, but you get fucking wicked ass shit like this. If... If this was Pokemon Snap, Professor Oak would bitch at you because you didn't center the picture properly, but it doesn't fucking matter because it's almost like this picture was taken 15 seconds before the cameraman fucking died. That's how badass it is. Next. We got the we got Bigfoot the van. This is just regular classic. This is more of a classic Bigfoot. <laughs> I, I like that this, this little blue car. I don't know if you can read it, but it says ouch right there. <laughs> Actually, I think there are, yeah, there's facts on the back. So this is, uh, yeah, look at this. It actually says when this was. Springfield, Illinois, the site of the first annual four-wheel off-road jamboree spring nationals. That's the most southern fucking thing I've ever heard. And this is uh, 1986. I want to point this out because we have people in chat that are huge Chris Chan fans. The guy who built Bigfoot, his name is Bob Chandler. It's not that Bob Chandler. Uh, Chris Chan's dad did not moonlight on the side as the inventor of the goddamn monster truck. I'm sorry to burst your bubble. That's did they just happen to have the same name? <laughs> oh yeah, this is a cool one. So this is just uh, this is just the 18 wheeler. This is what they used to haul Bigfoot around because uh, Bigfoot is not street legal. You cannot. It, life is not Grand Theft Auto 5. You cannot just drive a monster truck on on the road. So what they actually do, and get this, I, I know this. I'm trying to give you as much neat trivia as I can because if Reflex were here, he would we'd still be talking about this first card and we would not have been able to see these next two. But whenever they transport monster trucks, they actually pop off the giant tires and they put on like these really heavy duty mud buggy tires that are very kind of skinny, kind of tall and skinny. And it basically makes it so that they can drive the monster truck right inside the uh, semi truck trailer and there's like a little bit of leeway on each end and that's it and they just back up the semi truck and they just go and then they back it up out of the trailer put the real wheels on and smash some shit oh man this is another thing they used to do with uh, monster trucks uh, they don't really do it anymore I, I guess maybe they do it like uh, indie shows Let's see if we can get a focus on this one. there we go so what they're doing here is they used to actually drive across bodies of water, like like rivers and stuff, in a monster truck. Because even though th these trucks are massive and they're really heavy, their wheels actually make them buoyant. So they'll, they'll float on the top of the water and they can just gun their engine and they can use these, uh, they can use the divots in the wheels as paddles and they can drive across the water. A lot of people don't know that monster trucks can do this. They can drive across the fucking water. It's the Jesus truck. Miss Miss Bigfoot. I'm not. I'm not sure because I don't think I don't think Bob Chandler's wife drove Bigfoot. This might be MS as in uh, Mississippi Bigfoot. So here here's another another action shot. Bigfoot driving up over like a like a natural hill, getting getting some getting some air here, doing a wheelie. And what what I think is cool about the back of this card, I noticed when I was uh when I was doing this. This is something that I think is, is really relevant even, even today, 30 years later. Protecting the land is in the best interest of every American. We should protect our lands and wildlife for future generations to enjoy. I agree. And by the way, here's a fucking monster truck, just in case you need some, you need, you need a reason to believe this paragraph on the back that's preaching about hippie shit. So I figured since there's only five cards in this pack that since I have two packs, we can do too, because there was nine animal cards in the other one, so this will this will even it out, make it make it real nice, make it real nice like. Okay, so they have Bigfoot. This is probably this is him on display, probably at like a a, a car dealership or something like that. This was another uh, another thing they did. They would bring, um, especially when Firestone Tires sponsored Bigfoot, they would bring Bigfoot out to different Firestone locations and park it there and open up the hood and let you sit on the tire and take a look at the engine and stuff. So it looks like that's what's going on here. We can focus that, but then there's like, parked underneath Bigfoot is like a little buggy car. I wanna see, what's that say on the back? What is that? This is like a, this is like an optical illusion type thing. So this is Bigfoot number one, the very first Bigfoot. And uh, it's actually, it's parked, um, it's parked uh, on top of a little go-kart. So, uh, <laughs> 
this picture was taken. Yeah, look at this. Uh, Soapbox Derby in 1982 from St. Louis. This was one of many events that helped to launch the career of Bigfoot. So, ba so back when they took this picture in like 82, this was just this. I mean, you you can tell because the the name of the truck isn't on the side of the truck yet. Like they were, he was just bringing it there just to park it, just to say, hey, look, I put big wheels on a truck. That's cool. This is Bigfoot just breaking shit. This is this is what we came here to see. This is what we came here to see. There we go. Bigfoot. Now this 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 card, little known fact. This actually has a, a a subtitle. Bigfoot don't give a fuck. It crashes through something called the time clock shack. Uh, in the Greg. Bla oh, so this is a this is a movie. This is a still from a movie. Yeah, I guess the movie is called Take This Job and Shove It or something. And yeah, this was uh holy shit. So this is this is a still from Bigfoot's first ever role, I guess, in a motion picture or maybe it's a music video cuz I think I think Take This Job and Shove It was a song. Oh yeah, and here we go. There's uh th this is a size comparison. Uh here's here's Bigfoot, I think Bigfoot number 5 again with the the giant fucking wheels that we saw. <laughs> crushing the other trucks earlier and then this is it parked next to regular Bigfoot it just it makes this look like a normal car and I, I think off to the side even there's like another there's something else parked here that you know this dwarfs the size of that and it's just don't talk to me or my son ever again here's the last one. Oh man that's a good picture that's a that's a good ass truck picture right look at that Look at that truck. It's just covered in mud and shit, man. I'm not even like I'm from Texas, but I don't really fancy myself like like uh, like a, a Southern boy or whatever. But there's just something that's just badass about monster trucks. This is, this is the Bigfoot in its natural habitat. And then this is Bigfoot eating. <laughs> so this is a uh, ten cards. There's uh, two packs of five. I think these these cards are really cool, as especially it's not very often that vintage like classic trading cards like these age well. Usually we open them up and we just like laugh at them. Like I think last week we did the Super Mario Brothers movie cards. That's fucking that's bad. That was horrifyingly laughable because the movie sucked. But it's not very often that we get to open stuff from the era that's still cool today. Like, because monster trucks are still around, Bigfoot's still around, so I guess that's one of the reasons why these cards, to me at least, are still cool, because this is something that people still do today, and this is kind of like, this is like a, this is like a crazy throwback. This, again, like this card right here of number six, this was what the truck looked like when they printed these cards, like back when you could go to the gas station or whatever and like buy a pack of cards when you go in and buy your fucking bubble tape or whatever. This is what was new at the time, and it's still, like, it's just, it just blows my mind that, uh, it just blows my mind that, you know, this, this was a thing back in the 80s. I think they built the original Bigfoot in the late 70s, and then it became a thing in the 80s. So this was, like, this was at the peak of Bigfoot mania. And then now, of course, there's, it, there's Gravedigger, there's the Monster Jam circuit, there's Maximum Destruction. There's so many trucks today that are here because of because of Bigfoot. So, shoutouts to Bigfoot. Also, two packs, no dupes. That's always a good sign. Yeah.